Welcome to NCCR Core Module 4. Alright, so Module 4 is all about some basic power tools that you guys will be coming in contact with early on. These are basically universal tools, not very many special ones, but like ones that are just regular used by all trades. And so power tools are awesome. Um, hand tools were great, they got the job done, but they were exhausting and not very efficient. Now with power tools, we can get stuff done um, like never before. And they're making more and more specialized tools to make every job even easier. And so it's awesome. I love watching tools and just the new ones that are released all the time. And a lot of things in this book you're going to see all have a cord on it. Our classroom and a lot of job sites, they're cordless now. We don't have anything with cords. And so I'm going to show you the stuff um, the book wants you to know for the test and just the curriculum. But just know there's tools have been updated a lot since the release of this book like crazy. And so even our classroom is way above the standards that this book has as far as its tools. Um, again, we're almost 100% cordless at this point, which is awesome. And so the first thing we're going to be going over is drills, basic parts. And so a thing to remember when you're working with power tools, if you're ever changing the drill bit, changing a blade, doing any kind of maintenance, just unplug it. Make sure there's no power source coming to it. And so here, this one's a old Milwaukee, similar to what is pictured in front of you with the DeWalt, get this cord out of here. And I'm going to go bigger so you can actually see it this time what I'm talking about. So this is an old corded drill. These are awesome time savers. And so you have your handle to hold, make it stable. You got your trigger. On the front, you have a reverse forward, right? And then this is called your chuck. The part that holds your drill bit is your chuck. And so when you put a drill bit in, you get a drill bit out. With these old corded drills, when you put a drill bit in, one way when you spin the chuck, it opens the jaws in the front, and you just simply close it on. With old corded ones, they come with a chuck key. And so most guys are going to tape it to your cord and then you don't have to worry about losing it. If you just leave it in the box, you know you're going to lose that thing. So you tape it to your cord at the end so you never lose it. And you use this, tighten the chuck on the drill bit. You can get this really nice, that bit's not going anywhere. This is how tight you can get it. And then you'll have to use a chuck key again to get that drill bit out. And so you're going to keep that thing handy because you don't want to lose it. So that is your corded drills, right? Everyone, or rarely do people use corded anymore because we have so many different cordless versions with so much power these days. And so a cordless one, same kind of chuck, but you don't have a chuck key. You're just gonna use your hand and you hear that click, and you do it again, I'll loosen it. And now I'm gonna do it again. That click is it really tightening down on that bit. Now this isn't as solid, I have to admit, it's not as solid as using a chuck key, but on new drills, it's gonna hold your bit in. Just make sure you get it really nice and snug. If I had a battery, you can cheat. You can use the battery power itself to change the bit. So you just hold onto the chuck and then squeeze the trigger in the tightening motion. It'll tighten itself. And then after you get it tight, you just do one last turn um, to get it real tight on that bit. All right, I'm going to drop back down. All right, so that is your basic drill. So different kinds of drill bits. So your normal ones, we got a really nice new index here. And so this is every size from half inch down to like 30 second. But anyways, twist index or twist drill bit. It just looks like a piece of metal. It's twisted and sharp on the end. This is your normal when you think of a drill bit. That's your standard that you think of. Put those away. And then you see there are a spade bit or paddle bit. I'll get a big one so you guys can see it. So they have some kind of piloting bit in the middle, some kind of point that is going to go into the wood. This one has threads on it, so it actually is helping to pull it into the wood as you go, and that just makes it faster. And then the cutting edges are right here. And so the cutting tips are the same as the width of your, of your paddle, and so you're gonna cut a perfectly shaped hole as you go. And so these remove material really fast. They do dull quickly if you hit a nail or something, so you wanna make sure you don't do that. So those are made for a lot of plumbers, electricians, um, to do really quick holes through your two by four walls. Now a Forstner bit, 
is a different, it's a specialty bit. Again, I'll show you a big one so you can see it. But it has, has a little bit of a pilot bit if you can see it. There's a little bit of a point, but just barely. And so these bits are designed, they go in and they put a flat hole. They don't, you aren't usually going through the entire surface when you're using one of these. You're just trying to put in a dent for like a dowel to sit in or some kind of joinery for it to come and sit in. And you want a flat hole, you don't want it to go all the way through. But then the other kind of drill bit, they always come to a point and so it's a concave hole. The bottom isn't flat. So these are designed to give you a nice flat bottom. Similar to the spade bit, except the spade has a bigger pilot because it's designed to go all the way through. This is a design you're usually going to stop because you just want a partial hole in your piece of wood. And so a Forstner bit is designed to give you that flat bottom hole. So then, We got, I'll show you this one. This one's an auger bit. Auger bits are very similar to your, um, basically all of them, your spade bit and things, except it's basically a really big twist bit. And so this is designed to remove a lot of material really fast. And so the channels of your twist bit, that's for the material to get moved out of the hole. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever see an auger machine dig a hole in the dirt, it pulls the dirt up to the surface. It's the same thing when you're drilling through wood, the design is to pull the wood chunks out and throw them out of the back of the hole. And so these ones are really efficient at doing that. That's kind of the downfall of the spade bit. Sometimes the, the chips don't fly out after you start getting deeper. You have to put the bit in, pull it all the way back out to clear out the hole and then go back in. Or this is designed to keep throwing the chips out. So really quick um, hole making. And again, plumbers, electricians make a lot of holes. A lot of times um, are using one of these. Now a masonry bit, this one's brand new. You'll see this is also an SDS bit. Well, later on, we'll show you that. So SDS is just the design. It clicks in instead of a twist chuck. This has a special thing on the back. If you can see this shape, this is SDS plus. But these grooves allow it to click into the drill, the specialty drill. And so a masonry bit, if you can see, let me get it real close to the camera. See how it's not very sharp looking? It's kind of dull on the point. And so this is designed to be used for a hammer drill and going into concrete. Because concrete is different than drilling into metal and wood. It's a whole different surface. You aren't peeling off layers like you do with metal and wood. You're actually, you're basically just chipping in a nice fine um, diameter or a hole. You're just chipping away at it as it goes. And so the thing about masonry bits is they have this special thing on the end called carbide. And so it's extra hard and steel. It's not designed to be sharp. It's designed to be really tough and rugged. And so this is a masonry bit with the carbide. Now this will go through metal when you hit rebar or something in the concrete. It'll cut through that as well. So it has some sharpness to it or some drill capabilities, but it's designed to go through concrete. And so it's the carbide tip. That is your different drill bits. Right angle drill. Grab one. So a right angle drill is basically the same thing as your number normal quarter drill, except the drill bit is coming off to the side at 90 degrees. And so this is handy for when you're drilling in stud bays. This is a lot narrower profile. I can put my drill bit on and still drill my holes in my studs that are 16 inches on center. Whereas a normal gun, lots of times I can't get in there. So this is used for tight spaces. And again, this is what electricians use. Um, has a lot of power. It's gonna use with an auger bit because you're drilling a whole bunch of those holes. You gotta be real careful with these things. Want a handle, make sure you have a good grip because if these things bind up, it's going to break your wrist. I mean, it really has a lot of torque and a lot of power. So you want to make sure um, you're using it with the handle, have a really good grip on it. Be careful when it's over your head. You don't want it to hit you off the ladder. All right, I don't have one of these. This is a magnetic drill. These things are awesome. This is designed to cut through steel. And what's so cool about these is lots of times you're trying to drill something in place and get it perfect up and down hole. You can't do that with a manual drill. You're going to do your best, but you can't know it's perfect. So this is a drill press that is movable around the drop site and it's designed to, for the holes, uh, for the big bolts and stuff that hold your steel buildings together. That's what you're going to use this for. But what's so cool about it is this green button, you hit that, it turns on a giant magnet. And so this magnet locks it to the steel beam and it's not moving nowhere. And then you can drill and it's like a drill press. It's going to go perfectly straight up and down but you can hang these upside down, you can hang them sideways, and the magnet holds it in place. It's super heavy, but as soon as you engage that magnet, it's locked in there. 
And so these are super handy, super expensive, but awesome to have. And these come even in battery power now, which is awesome. Milwaukee makes a really cool battery one. Thing you wanna be careful for if you're doing this over your head upside down or even on a wall um, horizontally, you always want some kind of chain or attachment safety um, to connect it to that piece of steel in case what happens if you lose power. This is an electronic magnet. If all of a sudden you blow a breaker and power goes, guess what's gonna happen? That magnet, it will crash. And that's uh, $3,000 or so, a lot of money falling to the ground and gonna break. Or it could fall on your head and really hurt. This is heavy as well. And so you wanna make sure you have some kind of safety to make sure just in case that the power drops or your, your battery dies or something, the battery isn't gonna, or the magnet is not gonna release and drop it. And so you just wanna use that. We'll skip over how to drill with it. You can watch my tool time videos if you're curious on how to do it. So this is a rotary hammer. I have a different style in this one. This is, again, for drilling into concrete. It has a chisel action, which means it's only gonna hammer, or this one can drill as well. And this is gonna be used for those SDS bits. So this is designed for concrete. All right, this one's called a D-handle shape. That one's just a normal hammer drill. But I'll show you this masonry bit, this SDS bit, what's so cool. You line up the grooves and it just clicks in. No chuck, no nothing. This is just a really solid connection. And it's designed to absorb all the impact and stuff of the hammering action that it's going to do. And then to pop it off, there's a little thing here. You just push the trigger back and it pops right out. And so this is a rotary hammer. And if you can see, if I can zoom in, it has a hammer drilling action. You can turn the knob to just drill only or over here, right here is hammer only and all the different options, right? So you get a hammer only, a drill and hammer, or just drill, depending on your situation, right? And so these are handy and gonna be used for concrete drilling holes or using as a little mini jackhammer, right? SDS bits, again, I showed you guys this. There's all kinds of different types. Ours is an SDS or SDS plus, but then there's different kinds. There's some companies I think Hilti has their own there's spline ones, um, just different shapes. You just got to make sure you get the right kind for your job. And then if you see here, we have this with just a two cutter head. You can also get them with four. The four lasts a little longer, um, just different styles. You can see right there. Pneumatic tools. Um, we have actually, we probably have some of these somewhere from our old auto body class. But so pneumatic is using air power instead of electricity. So these are driven by compressed air going through. And you're gonna see these in mechanic shops. They have tons of torque, tons of power, and um, they're just really great. So mechanic shops have the air lines hanging from the ceiling instead of, in the classrooms you think around here at school, we have all the cords hanging from the ceilings. And so that's how they have, instead of electronic cords, they have power hoses, um, pneumatic air hoses hanging from the ceiling. So again, lots of power, lots of torque. Um, and so when you're using these, Lots of times, also, if you just don't have electrical sources nearby. Some guys will use this on a job site. Uh, Amish use them sometimes because they don't like ele electricity, electric tools. So for a long time, they use pneumatic. I don't, it's just what they did. And so if you don't have electrical nearby, pneumatic's an option. Also something for the hammer drills, I forgot to mention how they work, but lots of times, you'll as soon, when you're using it, you'll be able to hear that hammering action, but that doesn't happen. The drill bit will spin, but it doesn't start hammering until you put pressure on it. And that's what engages it to start the hammering action. So you have to put the pressure onto the surface. And this is to help you, um, this is to help you get that drill bit started, right? And so when you're using the hammer drill, just remember that. A way to keep yourself safe when using the pneumatic tools is this called a whiplash. Uh, what is it called? A whip, whip connection, whip protection, a whip check. There it is, whip check. I can't see it underneath my thing. So whip check. And so what this is, if somehow that came disconnected, there's a lot of pressure on these hoses. And so I don't know if you've ever seen a fire hose or something when all of a sudden that pressure gets released, it whips around like crazy. And so when you first disconnect, that can really shoot off and hit you. And so this is just a protection that won't come flying off. Even if they disconnect, they aren't gonna fly off and hit you. And so how you connect one of these is you have to pull the outer ring down, you slide this in until these ridges go all the way into the connector. And once they're all the way in, you can release that and it'll click into place and you'll be locked in. And then to take it apart, you just pull this ring down again and it will release. Some different tools, some different hoses. This is a harder connection than others, especially when it's under pressure. 
sometimes you got to put the tool on the ground so you can really put your weight into it to really push it on. And so that is your pneumatic tool connection. 